We continue to ask questions. At least two cars crashed on the Glen Jackson Bridge this week after an 800 foot hose on a Vancouver fire truck fell into the middle of the freeway. So we wanted to know what are the rules and regulations mm -hmm. when it comes to securing gear on emergency vehicles? And has this ever happened to other fire bureaus? Sally Showman spent the day digging deeper into a story you saw first on Six. Sally? Kelly, you know, I just printed out state law, and it's very simple here. It says on Section 10, all hoses and equipment shall be secured to prevent unintentional or inadvertent deployment. It's obvious the hose was not secured on Tuesday night, so today I return to Vancouver Fire Headquarters with more questions. Are you violating state code then? Um, we're going to look into that and find out exactly. We've learned only gravity keeps hoses in place on the back of Vancouver trucks. There are no restraints or clips holding them there. At first glance, it appears this violates state law that states all hoses and equipment shall be secured to prevent inadvertent deployment. The law that we stand under is fairly loose. I mean, it just says you shall not have, you know, equipment falling off. Well, we just had equipment fall off, so we're obviously doing something that, that we need to rectify. Yesterday, Vancouver Fire Division Chief Ward Canadian showed us the 800 foot hose that fell onto I-205. See this is fairly large chunk of metal. And he admitted this has happened at least once before on a Vancouver truck. We wanted to know if it's happened with any other departments and quickly found out Tualatin Valley Fire and Rescue accidentally dropped a hose in 2002 and the outcome was much more tragic. There was a moment there where it was hard to believe what I was seeing. An investigation revealed the hose may have caused a fatal crash that killed a 41 year old St. Helen's man. We come to work to save lives, and if we think we did anything uh, that contributed to, the, to a li life lost, then we're not comfortable with that. Today I got on the phone with the Washington State Fire Marshal's Office. Do you guys track things like this? And the Oregon Fire Marshal's Office. You would think there'd be a way to track this and found out there's no agency that tracks fire hose accidents. So I called the fire trucks manufacturer. I called you yesterday and I'm just calling back again today to see if they've heard of similar instances. Their spokesman declined comment. I did, however, get a hold of the National Fire Protection Association, who sets industry safety standards. These events are happening across the country. NFPA recommends fire departments use restraints to keep fire hoses in place. I asked how big of a problem this is nationwide. It is not a crisis. In other words, we are not hearing about this every month, but we are hearing about several a year. So what is next here in Vancouver? Chief Knabel tells me he needs to talk to the crew that was on board that fire truck on Tuesday night. He says they're not on duty next until next Monday. But as soon as a cause is determined, Vancouver Fire promise me, promises me they'll take corrective action and we will be sure to follow up. Reporting live in Vancouver, Sally Showman, Point Six News.